What a frame of brood. Look at that. Hey everybody, welcome to Free Range Art Farm. Uh, my name is Thomas. Uh, so today we are out here in the apiary. Let's see, what day is today? I don't know, it's like March 16th, 17th, I don't know, it's Wednesday, 2022. It's about 72 degrees, so it's a nice day. Um, we're going to be gone for the weekend here coming up, so I kind of need to get into the apiary and just check some things out. I'm going to our uh, Virgin Queen colony. I'm going to uh, dispatch the queen today and give them a frame of eggs, <clears throat> so hopefully they can grow a new queen. I've done a little bit of drone math, and uh, we had some emerged probably a week ago, so in about four or five days, uh, the drone should actually be ready to mate. Uh, so in 16 days when our queen emerges and then a few days later she'll go on her mating flight There should be plenty of drones out in the uh, uh, Little congregation zones uh, for her to mate her to mate with so Hopefully we'll get a good successful mating out of the replacement to the replacement queen uh, And then I'm just gonna just do some basic checks look for swarm cells and Maybe throw some queen excluders on and try to get the queen laying down in the lower box uh, So that's kind of the plan for today uh, so stick around. I hope uh, hope you guys enjoy what you see. Thanks. So I gave these colonies pollen patties last week. And I just wanted to look at all these girls lined up at the buffet table. Just munching away. Cute bunch of girls just getting their lunch. Well, here's the thing. I did not actually spot the queen in this colony. Uh, and I actually saw younger eggs in the top box, um, but I'm going to put the queen excluder on, and then what'll, what I'll do is in a week, sometime next week, I'll come back, and we'll see if there's <laughs> eggs in the top box or the bottom box, and we'll uh, adjust accordingly. So let me go ahead and get this box back on and get these girls buttoned back up and put to bed. All right, well, I was hoping I could find a nice frame of eggs in that uh, last colony, but I did not. In this one, though, I did find this really super pretty frame of nectar and pollen. I think it's really pretty. The reds and the that kind of yellowish green and the glistening of the nectar. It's just kind of pretty, so I thought I'd share that with you all real quick. All right, we're going to see if I can get in here so you all can see. We have some drones. This little boy right there. You can tell he's a drone because he's a little bit bigger than all the others. Oops, I just lost him now. He's a little bit bigger than the others. He's got a massive eyes. He has those big eyes so he can spot a queen when they're out in the mating uh, congregation area. So they need to fly really fast and fly, they can fly some pretty good distances. There's another little boy right there. Might be the same one we saw earlier. So drones are haploids. They are, what that means is they only have half of the chromosomes. So queens and worker bees, which the workers are all girls, and obviously the queen is a girl, they have 32 chromosomes. The drones come from unfertilized eggs from the queen and they only have 12 chromosomes just from the queen and since they are laid from an unfertilized eggs drones have no father they do have a grandfather though because of course you need a fertilized egg to get female bees so the worker bees and the queen come from a fertilized egg so obviously that requires the queen's egg and a drone's sperm. So drones are cool in that they have no father, but they have a grandfather. They live about 55 days on average. Some of them only live about 30 days and some of them live up to 90. It all kind of depends. Uh, they will immediately die once they mate. That is pretty much, pretty much their only function. But while they are in the colony, they do aid in keeping brood warm. They produce about 150% of the warmth that a regular worker bee does. So uh, if a worker bee produces whatever, 100 uh, amount of whatever heat, 
uh, the drone will produce 150. So they are a little bit more efficient at warming the brood. But other than that, let me see if I can find a drone again. I'm just looking at bees. There we go. Um, other than that, the drones have a pretty decent life. They cannot, they don't gather their own nectar or feed themselves. The worker bees will feed the drones. Which means in a weaker colony, or certainly towards the end of summer, uh, the workers will kick out all the drones because they will use up all the resources. And uh, the workers realize they need those resources. And the queen will just lay drones next, next spring. So there we go. Uh, there's another really cool word that I can't remember, but it basically means they come from an unfertilized egg. Um, pathogenetic, I think is what it is. Something like that. So drone bees are pathogenetic hyploids. Just some cool stuff I thought I would share about drones. Oh, one other thing. Drones cannot sting. They don't have a stinger. So this colony definitely has drones emerged and wandering about. So once drones are about 9 to 14 days, or a little bit older, uh, they mature enough to mate. So if these boys emerged, let's say they all emerged today, in about two weeks they should all be ready to mate. So when we introduce eggs into our virgin queen colony and they make a new queen, She'll emerge in about 16 days, and she will go out on her mating flight about four or five days later. So in roughly 20 days, about three weeks from now, a virgin queen will go ahead and try and mate. So these boys should be good, far enough along in their cycle to get us hopefully a successfully mated queen. All right, I wasn't gonna bring you guys back in until I found a cool frame of eggs, but what I did find was... What a frame of brood! Look at that! And... Look at the other side! Oh, this queen is a beast! Wow! That is amazing! So crazy. All right, I hope this comes up in the audio, but listen to this roar. These girls know they have a problem with their queen. They may have dispatched her themselves, but they are certainly acting like they are queenless. So we're gonna get them that frame of eggs and make them happy, hopefully. All right, gang, so I think I got into this colony just in time. So I believe I did quick scan through every frame and I could not find our virgin queen. So I'm, you know, 75% certain that they dispatched her themselves. So what I'm going to do is I've got this frame that has some, not a lot, but it's got some eggs in it on both sides. And this is from the colony next door. Now, these bees are from the colony next door. And yes, I'm going to put them right in this colony. Now, I have it on fairly good authority that uh, they really won't do any fighting. It'll be fine. They're all just going to get along. And hopefully these girls, since they are desperately queenless, they will immediately go to work on some queen cups. And... Uh, make themselves a new queen. Oh, goodness. All right, um, let me get this back out. I need more room. So that's the plan for this colony, is we've got them a queen. Well, we've got them a frame of eggs. Very young eggs, hopefully only a day or two old. There's some younger larvae, but they prefer the eggs. And they will make some emergency queen cups out of those. And then we will hopefully get <laughs> A laying queen here pretty soon. Now the other thing that we can do, once we get a queen in here, hopefully she's a good one, and then we're happy and set. Um, but if she's not, she's kind of a meh, 
uh, we'll let her go through a brood cycle or two to evaluate. And if she's not just not doing well, then uh, we will replace her with a, uh, a mated queen that we buy somewhere. Uh, but otherwise, this colony is hopefully gonna build themselves a queen and get back on track. Just for the sake of comparison, same colony after I put in that frame of eggs. They calm down significantly with the knowledge that there's a chance they can requeen. All right, well, I'm risking my life taking my hood off right now because <laughs> there's a girl that is still really angry with me. The uh, the purple colony was <laughs> they were a little testy. Uh, so I found the queen in most of the colonies. Uh, put a queen excluder on. What I'm trying to do is build a honey bridge. So all the little supers on there, I do a single brood chamber and then I want a honey bridge and then I'm gonna put supers on top and then we'll, uh, we'll steal honey from those. Um, but over winter last year, they overwintered with uh, a deep brood chamber and then a, a medium uh, honey uh, box. So that's kind of what I'm gonna stick with this season. And uh, so that's what I'm trying to do is just get the queen down below and get her laying down there and get honey up in the top. And then once there's a honey bridge, I can take the queen excluder off and the queen will stay down in the bottom and uh, I can put supers on top and she shouldn't go up and lay because she doesn't like to lay above honey. Um, so I went ahead and put another frame of eggs. I th think I did it off camera. I found a really good frame of eggs in this uh, in the Hoover Hive and I took that and I put it in in the, uh, the, queen, uh, the queenless hive. So now they've got uh, two frames, one with a bunch of eggs and one with a few eggs. Uh, so they should be able to supersede, or rather make an emergency queen cell and get, get a queen back in there. I saw a good amount of drones in three or four of these colonies. Uh, so I'm pretty happy about that. I saw one a little boy, which I'd caught him on camera. He was still all white and fuzzy. He must have just emerged today. They're so cute when they first come out. Uh, anyway, um, a good day out here in the apiary. Uh, I think it was pretty successful. So... Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll catch you next time. Be good, be well, be safe, be happy. And as always, be mindful of the bees. We need them. Thanks. Have a good one. Catch you next time. And we'll see you later. And I'm out.